This one right here is a direct screen grab from the music video. Right next to it is a photo that I took myself. There is nothing magical going on in the grade. In 2022, I spent 59 days total on set. I had 23 days as the cinematographer, 11 days as a camera operator, and 25 days as a lighting designer and gaffer. Now, I've been seeing a lot of videos lately about my most used gear of 2022 or something of that nature. Thinking about this, I've decided to make my own video on that, but to put a little twist on it. What gear have I used the most? And what is a great example of a real world project that I could demonstrate that gear uh, that I used on one of those set days as a gaffer for a project right here in Los Angeles. One of those gaffing jobs was this music video saved my life by pop music sensation, Andy Grammer. And this is the video we're going to be breaking down and discussing for today's topic. All of the videos that exist right now of people telling you to buy this light or that light, this one has the most output, this is the most bang for your buck, and not enough people are talking about taking away light, which is something that I really like to latch onto because without shadow, you have no shape. And in the beginning, all I did, uh, if you look back about five years ago, I would just blast light all over the place. And now I'm working quite the opposite. So one of the most frequent questions hand down that I get asked on a daily basis on my DMs is what is the best light I can buy? And I always respond to that question with a two-parter question of my own. Number one, what is your budget? And number two, what is your intentions for said light? And that second question is usually what stumps the person asking. Because I feel what's happening right now is everyone is just after the biggest, baddest light without fully understanding what that entails. And I do get it. I understand the desire for a big, badass light. However, with today's technology, unless you're truly trying to overpower the sun, you don't always need the big boy lights. And honestly, you'll never be truly satisfied because the lights that do battle the sun, well, none of us can afford those anyways, let's be real. But what I'm really trying to drive home here is what people often overlook is the more firepower you have, the more control you will inevitably need. And that always comes with the extra cost of more crew members and more grip gear required. Now, anyone that lives here in LA and is well aware of my current little minivan package knows that my brightest light in my kit is a Forza 500. But the thing that makes my van so versatile is the different kinds of fixtures I have combined with the amount of modifiers and rags that I have. And that little van package of mine was not only used on all 25 days of those gaffing jobs that I was hired on, but also was used on all of my DP jobs as well. Now, obviously I did have certain jobs that uh, were of higher demand and had bigger budgets. So in those instances, I was able to bring on the gaffer I use, which is David Goodman of Goodman Grip and Light. However, when I do have a gaffer on set, we still use all of my rags because one, that saves production having to rent those things, but also two, I know what I like. I have selected all of my rags in the same fashion of how I select diffusion filters for my camera. Because 80% of the time, the clients don't have the extra cost for an additional van and additional manpower for a true dedicated one ton grip and light package. So more often than not, we're limited to my little micro one ton minivan package that when I'm the DP, quite honestly, has the entire camera package inside as well as some very efficient grip and light gear. But even when I am just a gaffer, we still manage to make viral videos, such as the one we're going to be looking at today, which currently has over 1 million views. <laughs> now, the examples I'm going to share with you all today from this Andy Grammer music video, uh, th these, in my opinion, feel like quite pleasant looking images, and yet these setups were done with very little firepower. Now, I will admit that a good portion of the image is due to the work of the cinematographer of this particular project. So shout out to Nikki Kiros and his choice to shoot on the Alexa Mini and vintage Nikon AIS lenses. But lighting, as we all know, is half the battle when it comes to capturing any image. And this is something that I always try to drive home over on my Patreon, and that is that the simple fact that it's not always so much about light as it is about shadow. 
And the biggest problem with having some huge, big, badass light is now you have that much more level that you need to control. And if you're not controlling that light, then your image is inevitably going to come out flat. And if painting has taught photography anything, it is that the number one goal of creating any image should be depth. Don't kill all your dark areas. Those dark areas are gonna end up being our shadows. So the example I want us to look at today is these bedroom and bathroom scenes from this Andy Grammer music video. And this is a rip taken right off of the actual music video. And then these are images that I captured on the day with my little Sigma FP. Now, if anyone was to take a guess based off of everything I just said, they would just say, oh, well, it's obvious he has his Forza 500 parked outside of that window. But that guess would be wrong. This scene was in fact done with just a few small lights. The fixture outside of that window is in fact in fact, my number one workhorse this past year, which is the little cream source micro bender. It's a little tiny one by one bicolor unit. It's completely waterproof and it runs at full capacity off of little 98 watt hour V mount batteries. And yet it packs the same punch as a 200 watt HMI or a 400 watt tungsten Fresnel. And guess what? Cream Source did not send that light to me. I just love Cream Source fixture so much that I bought it with my own cash. In fact, a feature length documentary that I was the gaffer on for over a year involved a lot of traveling this past summer. And no matter what part of the country we were in, I always had Cream Source Vortexes in the van as part of the rental package. But the little micro bender is the more affordable, consumer friendly option. It is a little LED panel, but I can guarantee it is not like any of your other LED panels. So if you just look at this panel, you can tell instantly that it is different just off of its design alone. And despite it being or looking like a normal LED panel, it actually has a narrow beam angle of only 13 degrees with an output of around 480 foot candles from a three meter distance. Now that is only 21 and a half percent less output than a Forza 500. Keep in mind, this is a highly accurate industry standard bicolor unit. It is even designed to be handheld if needed. It's waterproof and it can run off of little nano V mount batteries at full 100% brightness. The versatility alone trumps the Forza 500 in a lot of scenarios. In fact, the whole reason it was used here outside of these windows instead of the Forza is because it didn't require as large of a stand, nor did we have to worry about running some big long stinger to it to provide power. But also this setup was much later in the evening. It was one of the last shots of the night. And this was filmed back in April of last year. It was starting to get cold outside. There was already dew forming on all of the vehicles, but I knew because of the cream sources IP65 rating that it would be fine. And it gave the same results of a Forza 500 with a Fresnel. In fact, it even performed better because the Forza 500 with the additional Fresnel attachment would never give you that narrow of a beam angle. However, if you need a wider beam angle with that little cream source, then it does have the option for drop in lenses that kind of just look like diffusions, but they're actually lenses. And in my kit, I have both the 20 and 60 degree lenses. So not only do they soften the light, much like a, a diffusion panel would, but they also widen the beam angle. But keep in mind that is going to cut down your output as well. So that's all that's going on outside that window for both of these setups in this Andy Grammer music video. The trick here is haze, lots and lots of haze but also maintaining proper ambient light level in the room or what Shane Herbert refers to as room tone. <laughs> so whether it's an indoor or outdoor scene, before any light or modifier is even brought into the space, I always first ask myself one question. Where is the light already naturally coming from? Because if you can't answer that question before you start building your lighting setup, you're gonna find yourself in a pickle really rather quickly. Now this Andy Grammer example here is a bit of a stretch because it is so stylized of a piece, but still the rules will always apply. Obviously any room with windows 
is going to usually be your main helper. You're either going to decide to have the outside light be your main source, which is something that Roger Deakins does quite often, or you decide that the light outside will only serve as a background light, and then you have to start thinking about the practicals inside. But in this scenario, it's very obvious that we were going for huge angelic beams of light coming through these windows. However, as you'll notice here, his skin tone still has decent exposure on the camera side. <laughs> What's really helping sell the look here is added room tone on the inside using a little kit of Godox RGB tubes. Which brings us to my second most used gear of 2022. I have 12 of these Godox tubes in all three sizes. Now this is the beauty of working with RGB and bicolor units. You can always match them perfectly with one caveat. I say perfectly because I always use my trusty Siconic 800 color meter. Now this is honestly my number one most used tool of all time from the very first day I bought it. Okay, I have never gone without using this thing on any set, even down to setting up these stupid rinky dinky talking heads for my YouTube. It always gets utilized on a daily basis not only on my cinematography jobs, but most certainly on my gaffing jobs as well. Here's the biggest lie I hear quite often. Oh, I don't need something like that. I know all of my lights match because they're all Aperture or they're all the same brand. Never once have I come across two matching LED fixtures, even when they're from the same manufacturer. And what I mean by this is the numbers on the back of an LED fixture very rarely match what they're actually truly outputting. Even when it comes to something like industry standard lights such as airy sky panels and cream source. And this is mainly due to the simple fact that the more amount of hours that are put on an LED unit is going to significantly affect the color temperature and the quality of the light that that LED fixture is emitting from its little tiny diodes but also even distance and brightness level can also affect the overall color rendering as well. And so this is where my Siconic 800 comes in. This little tool right here is hands down the only reason why I have never concerned myself with having all matching brands of lights on any of my jobs. When I'm shopping for lights, I'm only looking for two things, output and color accuracy. Quite frankly, as of today's date, there is yet to be any LED fixture that exists on the market that is 100% accurate. And I'm talking strictly in terms of pure, true color rendition. It just doesn't exist right now. So for all the folks out there that are using LED lights without a color meter, then I just assume either A, they just don't care, or two, they don't realize, or three, they just could dismiss it all together because if they're just a gaffer, then they don't have to bother about the post-production side anyways. However, when it comes to indie filmmakers like you and I, well, we are just as part of the post-production as we are part of the production. Now, obviously that statement does not apply to my gaffing jobs. However, I take that mentality with me on all of my gaffing jobs. So I guess you could say my passion for filmmaking makes me care a little bit too much or definitely more than what your average Joe would care about. But this is why this room in this shot from this Andy Grammer music video looks the way that it does. Because look, I can show you two different side-by-sides here, okay? This one right here is a direct screen grab from the music video, okay? Now look at that, right next to it is a photo that I took myself with my Sigma FP and a Leica R Summicron 50 millimeter. I only show you these side-by-sides to make you aware like there is nothing magical going on in the grade. And this is what I'm talking about. Being able to match the temperature and the quality of light is just as important, if not more important than output. So back to the room tone and the Godox tubes. So the tubes that are inside the room providing the room tone have been dialed in via my Siconic 800 to match what the cream source is pushing through those shears. So I say to the DP, Nikki Karos, I say, hey man, what temperature do you want this room to be living at? And then he tells me what he's going for. So then I have my key grip, Tristan Welsh, jump on the dial of the light while I take my reading from inside the room. 
because everything is going to affect the temperature of that light, right? Specifically the throw of the beam and whatever happens to it once it cuts through the shears and these blinds. And I know it's a little hard to tell because we're a little blown out here in this scenario, okay? But that's just the style of this video. But yes, there are shears behind those blinds on this window. So the meter reading has always got to be taken from exactly wherever the talent will be captured on camera. So once I have that number, then I can go ahead and dial it in on my Godox tubes. And I'm able to really match because again, the numbers on the tubes aren't gonna be accurate, but using this while I'm dialing it in, I know that now the tubes are perfectly matched to what's happening with that cream source. Just to remind you, this is the photo I took on the day and this is the actual video. No magic happening in the grade. Can you imagine how, how thrilled Nikki could have been, because the cinematographer is also the colorist on this little project, how thrilled he was that he didn't have to go in and fix the skin tones and all of this nonsense. Now here's another thing that I always talk about. Even if you have something like the little Godox tubes, which in fact do not have green magenta control, well, this is where your Sekonic is gonna come in handy again, because you can pull up the hue and saturation of whatever your key light is, right? So let's say that it was a little bit green and we needed to match that with the tubes. Well, we can dial that in via the hue and saturation because the tubes are RGB. So that's a little feature that also comes in clutch if you have lights without tint control and you don't have the correct gels with you. Okay, so now that we've talked enough about temperature and readings and all of that, let's talk about where these tubes are. Where are they in the room? So because the framing of this is really helping us out, we're actually outside of the room because you can feel the door frame here and you can literally see the door handle on this side, right? So camera is actually parked outside this room and we're looking in. And the fact that he's sitting makes it much easier to throw one tube directly on top of the window frame of our window that's in the shot. And all of my tubes have little honeybee egg crate grids on them so I can really control where the beam of light is landing. The one on top of this window is literally just helping push the light more. Now there is another window off camera that we weren't utilizing. It's completely blacked out. However, I did use the frame as a nice place to set the other tube, and that's what's actually providing this edge on him coming this way. Now, there is a third tube in this room, which is inside, directly sitting on top of the door frame. And that's just providing the little bit of push, the little bit of fill that you can feel here in the front, making sure he doesn't get too underexposed on the camera side. The trick here is using a light meter to dial in those tubes just right so they're not overpowering what the cream source is doing. Room tone is always best if it's one to two stops under your key light. And that's what's going on here. So again, I wanna keep jumping back and forth. This is the actual footage, and this is a photo that I took on the day. Which brings me to my fourth most used piece of kit in 2022, which, funny enough, is a little stills camera. <laughs> I always bring the Sigma FP with me on my gaffing jobs because it allows me to take photos of my lighting setups for my own portfolio, right? Obviously, if production gives you permission to do so. And then for jobs where I'm the DP, I have been bringing along my A7S III to provide for the BTS because most clients don't understand the importance of that or they don't realize the enormous impact that BTS can have on social media accounts. So one workaround to this, when I'm the DP, of course, is I say, well, hey, do you at least have the budget for just a person? And then I can provide the camera. And they usually go for that. And obviously that's something that I love to do because of the YouTube and the Patreon, but also all of my gears in short. So I have no problem handing my camera over to someone. And again, when you are the DP, you have a little bit more leverage to make proposals like that. But as far as my gaffing jobs go, as you can see, it definitely provides a much more cinematic image versus some crappy iPhone camera. Okay, now let's jump to our bathroom scene, which is almost identical. The difference here is now instead of sitting, he's standing, and he's actually much closer to the door frame as well because it is a much tighter space. So rather than front lighting him, which is something I always try to avoid for obvious reasons, this time instead of putting a tube directly above the door frame, because again, that would be too much front light because he's so close to us, instead there's actually one 
right above the mirror that's above the sink. And then there was another door just off camera inside the bathroom there. And I put our other tube on top of that door frame. And that's actually what's edging him out here, just ever so slightly letting him come away, come off of that background. And of course our cream source is doing what it's due, you know, it's blasting through that window. But again, that was the style of this. Now keep in mind too, this is a portrait shot with my Sigma camera, obviously. Um, but you get the idea here. Now looking at this, I do feel like we had a four x four flop parked just outside of the, of the room here. And you know, a four x four ultra bounce flop is something like that that hangs on a C stand. And the one thing looking at this and my Patreon members know that I can't help but analyze all of my stuff and always talk about what I wish I would have done is, you know, this is a scenario where we really could have benefited from our little Roscoe dash eye light. Because as you can tell, he's just not getting the ping in his eyes that I really really, really, really always want. However, this was the very last setup of the day. So I can imagine this or on hour 13 or 14 here. And by that time when it comes around, uh, we're all just like, let's just get out and go, you know, because also uh, production doesn't want to spend extra on this location either. Which speaking of the location, you know, these vines and things are really providing all of the production value here. Because if it wasn't for these weird vines and grass all over the walls, it would be just boring stark whiteness, right? But also again, what's happening and helping us here is the haze. <laughs> And why I always use haze on set is because it helps lower the contrast and lift the blacks. And it's really adding nicely to this overall gritty yet otherworldly vibe that we have going on here. There's a certain kind of ethereal feeling of this video and that's just what the piece demanded. So I guess that would bring me to my fifth most used tool of the year, which would be my hazer. In fact, most of the folks I work with, I always hear this statement multiple times. It wouldn't be a dog times job without the haze. Whether it's for stylized productions such as this one, or if I'm just using it to help out the room tone and add texture to the overall image. So if you need an extra element and help lifting your blacks, then a really subtle bit of haze in the room is going to be your number one helper. And I've already done an entire video on how to properly meter for haze. Uh, I've left a link to that down below as well as there is a link to the hazer that I use, which it is very compact, it's very affordable, and for its size, it actually packs quite a bit of punch. <laughs> now, one last thing to talk about before we go is if you are interested in the little cream source micro bender, you're bound to come across this micro color, which is the newer RGB version. However, this one is going to be over 300% less output meaning that the bicolor version is three times as powerful as the RGB one. And at that point, considering the costs, I really think you'd be better off with something like the Nanlite Mix Panel 150, which is another awesome sky panel option that I keep in my kit as well. I already did a full review on that thing. As always, links down below. It's another light that I bought with my own money. And I like to say that so people don't think I'm just making ads for free shit. That's never really the case with me because here's the thing, if I'm truly interested and passionate about something, I will research the hell out of it for at least a month before I end up buying it with my own cash. And plus when it comes to the reviews I do here on YouTube, I have so many rules of my own that it scares most companies away. Now, as you can see, there are a few other larger setups involved with this music video that I broke down some time ago over on the Dog Times Patreon. So if you're interested in seeing more of this, then links are down below. However, the main point of this video I wanted to drive home was showing what you could accomplish using very little. I am always far more interested in modifying the light. That's why uh, over two years ago, I spent about two grand on a whole bunch of my own rags and flags because I like having options for control. So as always, thanks for watching. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button, the like button, perhaps the share button. Uh, going off of that, I want to start something new here. Uh, and this is for all of my diehard fans that watch all the way to the end. If you are on Instagram, do me a favor, screenshot this video, post it in a story, tag me in it, uh, leave a little quick little blurb about what you learned from the video or what you took away from the video. I will be sure and reshare that. And I think that'll be a nice way of uh, leading people to your Instagram account and also um, kind of making people more aware of the video and what we do here. As always, I gotta give a shout out to this month's Patreon producer, that's David Carroll. And for now, that is a wrap.
be better for now. We can use, oops, sorry guys. We can use that for now. That's cool. Let's do it. All right, let's do it, everybody. <laughs> Among other things.